hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Welcome back to The Loop. As you know, Thursdays are always special because I'm getting to spend some time with my dear friend, Greg Nibbler, and my amazing co-host here. For those of you who are new and who, thank you so much for shopping. Welcome to, if you're coming on the replay as well. My name is Winnie Sun. You may have seen me on CNBC, on Council there, Forbes contributor, and longtime personal finance, financial professional. So thank you so much for being here and welcome Greg also to the show. How are you, Greg? I'm doing good. Thanks, Winnie. Yeah. And hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Like Winnie said, whether you're watching live, watching on replay, wherever it is, we just appreciate it. And if you don't know who I am, I've been a reporter in a number of different fields, including the NBA, but largely tech over the last 10 years or so, uh, hosting a number of different shows, but covering all kinds of different things with technology and gadgets. So I talk a lot about that. I bring a little bit of that to this show, hopefully the fun stuff out of tech. But this show is going to be a lot of fun because we also have a very special guest who's going to be joining us here in a minute. And I don't know. I mean, you've probably already been spoiled. It's not like it's a surprise guest. You've seen the posts about this, but I'm really excited for our guest who's going to be joining today. Who's your friend, Winnie? He is. He's my dear friend, one of my best friends. In fact, I am so honored, so excited to have him here. I And if you saw my t tweets on Twitter just recently, you know I did warn you not to come to the show hungry. But if you did, you know what? We're going to make it work. Let's start with the market, let you know how we close. Now, the Dow closed down 150, actually, I should say this, the Dow closed up 153 points, and the NASDAQ closed up 15 as well. The S&P also up 18. Now, here's some good news. If you didn't know already, the U.S. economy has actually been getting better since pre-pandemic. And it, although it's starting to improve, we're seeing really positive earnings this week from a lot of the big tech names, but we're still very concerned about COVID and what that's going to happen uh, next, the next few months, definitely the next year, and how that's going to impact the economy. So until that happens, you're going to see more volatility in the financial markets. But on other news today, in terms of unemployment, as you know, Thursdays are when the label department reports unemployment numbers. Unfortunately, as of the week ending July 24th, last week, more people did file for unemployment, over 400,000, which exceeded estimates. To give you an idea, that's almost twice as many people than in a pre-pandemic uh, year. So certainly not going in the right direction. But on other news, which I thought was really interesting that you might find fascinating, is that Amazon shares actually fell after a market today. In fact, they fell more than 5%. So just it goes to show you that even when you're big, it doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to exceed or outperform and investors aren't always going to be pleased. In fact, as you know, right now, um, Jeff Bezos has passed the reins over to CEO Andy Jassy, who previously led AWS. So we'll see how that takes place. But as Greg mentioned, that's not why you're really here. And we know why you're really here. You're here to see the one and only, my dear friend, and let me tell you, one of the most amazing human beings that I know, the one and only Mike Chen. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey. Hey, Winnie. Hey, Greg. Thanks so much for having me. Well, Mike, you know, I know you are super busy. So I want to jump right into it. There are those who, I don't know if there's many of you who don't know who Mike is. If, you, if you're one of the maybe one or two dozen of people here in, in the world that don't know who Mike is, Mike started his YouTube career seven years ago. It's so crazy. I can't believe it was only seven years ago. And he's attracted such a huge, massive following on his nearly a dozen different YouTube channels. Now, as you know, he features a variety of content ranging from all sorts of food adventures, from traditional, amazingly delicious Chinese culture to supernatural kind of eerie content. So for his Strictly Dumpling channel, in fact, Mike travels the globe exploring different cuisines, delicious steak, and, you know, I will tell you some of the best plates of food I have had in my life, I was able to share with this amazing human being, Mike Chen. And so Mike, actually, I will I will say that I have never been led astray. I'm sure many of you who follow his content know that as well. And um, I don't know, Mike, I feel like, you know, eating is just so much more fun with you. And people always ask me, like, is it different eating with you? And it, it actually is different eating with you, Mike. This is, I would call it an experience. Well, I appreciate that, Winnie. Uh, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, yeah, if, eating, I feel like, you know, there's two types of people in the, this world, uh, those who live to eat and those who eat to live. Uh, so I feel like people who live to eat, it's just, 
life's just a little more flavorful. And uh, uh, if you treat eating not just like as a burden or just something to, you know, put sustenance in our bodies and treat it like an experience, then every day you can have more than three, sometimes more than three, multiple wonderful experiences. I know. I think you are definitely more than three. And on that note, I want to say a big hello. I see Joshua. I see Cross X Fighter. I see Flip Flops Needed um, joining us on YouTube. We see uh, Vicky on Facebook. We see Sadiq on YouTube. I see so many of on different platforms. Hello uh, on Twitter Live. Also, Robin Stevens. It's great to have all of you here. And as Greg mentioned in our previous show as well, as you remember, this show is about as much about you as it is about us. So if there's a question that you want to ask Mike, definitely reach out, send them in, and we're going to try to monitor your questions throughout the show. And by the way, Flip Flops New Year says you need to come back to Irvine. Let me just tell you, he definitely needs to come back to Irvine because I'm in Irvine. I would love to see Mike again. But give you an idea of some stats. I mean, this is just so impressive. Mike, I don't know. I'm sure you know this, but I did a little calculation, the financial person and then we had to do this. We've you you easily exceeded one billion video views on YouTube. Oh, I, I wasn't counting, but yeah, good to know. Thank you. I mean, it's not like kind of over a billion; it's like quite over a billion. So you know, I feel like we need to give a round of applause. You know, oh, this well, is just thank, thank you, thank you. That it's, is impressive. Seven one, years and over a billion views. Yeah, that's a amazing. billion. With the letter B, by the way, okay? This is a lot of views. Like, not only that is, I feel like we should have some fun, Greg. What do you think? I mean, let's put them on the hot seat. Should we do some <laughs> trivia? Uh, yeah, we can do some trivia. We can ask some questions. I mean, I've got a bunch of things that I wanted to ask him as well. Um, but yeah, do we want to go into, into the trivia side of things? Is that what we want to have, Woody? Let's do it. Okay. All right. So let me, let me pull these up here. I want to make sure that I get my questions here for you, right? So... Um, we want to ask about food and some of the other things as well, but I wanted to ask you this. So if, uh, if you, Mike Chen, you've traveled everywhere, you've gone to all these different places, but say you were stuck on a desert island, what would be in Mike's backpack? What would you bring with you? Uh, tons of ramen. For Hold, sure. on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. We have to let the audience participate. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. <laughs> a very regimented Definitely show, not ramen. Very regimented. <laughs> At all. No ramen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you know, it's a great emergency food. All right. So here are the questions though. So this actually is fun. That's not even Mike, okay. All right. If if Mike was on an island, would he pack broccoli, hot dogs, hot chili oil, deep dish Chicago pizza, or 12 pack of onion pancakes? And those of you are watching. Um, we would love to get your feedback. And then, Mike, I know this is a tough one for you. Um, well, one of them isn't that tough. Um, <laughs> what right, let me know when you want me to answer this. All right. All right. I think we're ready. Which one would – okay, Vicky is saying D, that you would pick deep dish Chicago piece. All right, Vicky, hmm, okay, C, hot chili oil. Okay, I see, I see someone's been keeping up with their YouTube there. Very, very fun. All right. I see. Okay. Flip Flops Need is saying C. We got a lot of D. We got a lot of C. LinkedIn. LinkedIn in the house is saying C. Mike, which of these would you bring in your backpack if you were stuck on an island? Um, I think the deep dish pizza would be hard to cook. I thought about that. Definitely not the broccoli. That's my mortal enemy. And <laughs> I think it has to be chili oil because... Because I could fish on a deserted island and there's water. I could fish. I, I've watched Castaway a bunch of times. I could definitely fish. Um, but I, you know, I also, you know, that's that scene where Tom Hanks is like, ah, oh, another crab. Oh, it's flavorless. Now we have some hot oil. So I think if I can catch some fish, some crab and season it, I do a lot better than he did. I, I may not even want to get off. I just like stay on. You just stay on all day yeah, long. Stay right? on. Why not? All right. The, the question is, how much chili oil would you take? Like, like, and and a second question. Let's do an add-on. If you could take two of these items, which two would they be? Um. Okay. So hot oil for sure. Um. And then I'll go for the pack of pancakes. Uh. Mainly because you know I I think I can get protein on this island. I. I I've watched enough MacGyver as well. I, I feel like I can fashion some stuff out of sticks and, and bow and arrow or something. 
Um, I think I could do it. So if you give me some pancakes, I, I think I could make a decent fish taco, spicy fish taco. What do you think, Greg? Would you want a spicy fish taco? It sounds pretty good, yeah. I mean, a spicy, yeah, fish taco sounds amazing. Amazing. I like the I like the reasoning behind the oil. Although for me, the deep dish pizza, I figure maybe if you're if it's a desert island, maybe you can lay it out on a rock and cook it. Something like that may not last that long, but I I would be hard pressed to pass that up. Okay, I love that. Okay, and we yeah. see we see a friend here from Twitter Live saying Mike equals top Tom Hanks. We see Paul joining from Twitter Live also saying pancakes. And Monty, we catch you. Monty is all about the onion pancakes. Okay, Robin saying Stevens is saying pizza. Now, Robin, actually, you've had pizza with I think you've had pizza with Mike, or you haven't. But you know, or maybe you haven't. You have no. You and I had pizza on Mike's suggestion, and it was really good pizza. All right, let's go to another question, Carlos. Let's let's ask what is Strictly Dumplings' most viewed video, and this one I really would love your thoughts. Now, those of you who watch Mike, this is gonna be like you really need to have your Mike Chen um, trivia down because we're gonna have some fun today. I would love to hear how many of you can guess Mike's most viewed video now this is hard i'll give you a hint all right every single one of these videos has millions of views millions with a big m in fact so much so each of these videos has over 10 million and one of these has two times that amount in terms of views this is bananas okay so which of these do you think is mike chen's most viewed video mike do you know the answer to this i'm thinking you do I, I, I do not because I looked, um, mainly because uh, this came up like a few months ago when I was uh, uh, doing something. I forgot, forgot why it came up, but yes, I do know the answer. Try, okay. try, yeah. right, can, I, is it, is, can I answer? Uh, not yet, because okay. we got a lot of answers coming in. So Paul is saying, A, uh, perfect ramen noodles in Osaka, Japan. I love that. That was one of my favorite episodes. Uh, D, okay, so Joshua, uh, Cross-Sex Fighter is saying brunch at 7-Eleven in Seoul, Korea. That was also a really good episode. Um, a, same thing, uh, ramen in Osaka, for sure. I mean, for those of you, you know, after the pandemic, when you go back to Japan, this is definitely a video you'll want to watch a few times. It's just like take notes. Um, all right. Okay, flip flops needed from Irvine. I feel like you really are gonna represent us here. And you're saying 7-Eleven versus Lawson in Tokyo, Japan. All right, very, very, very cool. Um, hmm, shall we give you another minute? All right, Mike, what's the answer? I believe it's uh, brunch at Taiwan 7-Eleven. It is, it is. It's actually eating brunch at Taiwan 7-Eleven over 21 million views my friends wow yeah cool. so <laughs> that was a good day that was a fantastic layover we just we just left the airport uh we had time for one meal in taiwan before we were heading off to uh i think vietnam i think we were heading to vietnam and then uh and then we had one stop and it was it was uh you know we went to 7-eleven we ate it it was amazing my first time eating at a 7-Eleven in Taiwan. Wonderful experience. Now, Mike, you had several items in Taiwan, um, mm -hmm. in 7-Eleven, in, in, in as well as other meals in Taiwan. What is something that you miss eating in Taiwan? Taiwan, for sure, uh, you miss the beef noodle soup because that's one of the best things in that country. Uh, the, the pancakes are amazing. And the, something else I really miss is, um, so uh, there are tea shops in Taiwan, uh, notably Taipei where you go in and they basically treat you like family you go in and they pour whatever tea you want some of these tea sells for i think a uh, hundred dollars uh for hundred dollars for an ounce and they pour whatever you want for you and then you just sit there and you drink tea with with these shop owner, with the tea tea uh tea farmers and explain to you the whole process behind how they make the tea uh how they grow the tea how they roast the tea and um and then at the end of the day, if you don't want to buy anything, it's fine. If you want to pick up something, great. So there's no pressure to sell you anything. Like some experience like that anywhere would be like easily $30, $40, $50, uh, if not more. And in Taiwan, it's just free if you don't want to get anything that day. Uh, but it's just a, such a great experience. So Taiwanese people are some of the nicest, uh, most welcoming um, people. So that's a place I 100% I – should, I should try to get in. They wouldn't let me in, so – Kind of I know. I, I can't wait to go there too. I know. Right now, with I know. Let us in. Well, I guess maybe you have 
you'll probably have to live there for part of the year again. That, that's on the bucket list of the pandemic, I'll move right? There. For, I'm, I'm happy moving there. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. I love that. All right, Greg, I know you've got trivia for Mike next. All right, we got another one. I'm going to guess Mike knows the answer to this one, but the audience may not know the answer to this. So uh, here's the question. So before Mike's success on YouTube, what was his career? So what was he doing before this? So here are your, here are your different answers. A, sous chef in Las Vegas. B, a wedding videographer. C, McDonald's crew member. D, a model at CES. Or E, an apprentice at a noodle factory. So here's your, this is a wide variety here. This is a wide variety of, of careers. It could be any one of them, obviously. But uh, I've actually I, seen I you do one of these things. Yeah. And, and, and if you want a plus one, um, one of these also, Mike has done, like I would say not that long ago at the K-pop convention. So maybe if you know your Mike Chen trivia, you might actually know what this one is. All right. So I see a lot of people, ooh, a lot of people jumping in. We got D. A lot of people saying Mike was a model at CES. Okay. All right. I've got a lot I'm of A's. Chef. A lot of people say that you were sous chef in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's okay. a lot of sous chefs coming in. A lot of sous chefs, Mike. A lot of sous chefs. You know, yeah. you know that that onion pancake with cheese has made it. It's been at the Wind Wind Hotel, I'm guessing. Um, very cool. All right, Mike, tell us. Okay, D D. A lot of people think you're a model too, Mike. That's uh, yeah, I mean, uh, modeling was something I I would have done. Uh, you know, just in case this YouTube thing never worked out, I was gonna. <laughs> but Abercrombie would have been my choice, not CES. So I'm just gonna say. That would have been uh, what my life would have been. Uh, anyway, it wasn't a sous chef in Las Vegas. That's kind of cool. It was actually a wedding videographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind Flip of a crazy in. spin. Going from Flip wedding videographer. In. Yeah, I've I've been I filmed uh, weddings for about ten years. Um, been to so many weddings that uh, I hope eventually when I go to my, I feel something. <laughs> I feel like I've been <laughs> numb to all the all the wedding uh, all the weddings I've been to, but I've been to my fair share, or a lot of people's fair share of weddings. Um, when you were doing all these weddings, when you were filming these, were you sampling whatever and, and taking a look at whatever it was they were serving for food? And getting oh a, no, that was the best part of the whole thing. That, yeah. Why do you think I Free did meal. it? Right? <laughs> like that, that, I mean, they didn't even pay me. I, they were just like, "Hey, we'll just get you a plate of steak," and I'm like, "I'm in, I'm in." Like, wait, wait, wait. where is the steak? Uh, Outbacks from Outback, hater by Outback. Still, I'm in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that is 100% what I look forward to. There was always a break where you can uh, eat some food. And yeah, trust me, they lost money. They lost money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Greg, that's a great question. So let's ask this. Mike, in your future wedding, what will you be serving at your wedding? Uh, 100%. Uh, I'll tell you what I won't be doing. I, I will not have it. Uh, I will not have it like like a like a menu wedding i'm doing all buffet like i i feel like uh wedding food i never get enough so it's always like you know you make a wrong choice you ch you, you you have a brain fart that day you choose the chicken over the steak and then you're just miserable for the rest of the night i don't want people to feel miserable i don't want people to have any food regrets mine is going to be all buffet all maybe citron food or something like that something really nice uh but inexpensive uh but really delicious and authentic. And I think people will have a great, if the food is good, people are gonna have fun no matter what. That's, that's how I feel sure. about it. Like, at least they could be like, that wedding was horrible, but at least the food was good. <laughs> that, that's what I want my wedding to, that's the, the model for my wedding. But it might not be that much fun, but at least the food was good. <laughs> at least the food was good. Yeah. I mean, that sounds really great, Greg. I mean, like you could you could see at Mike's wedding, and then like I, I'm, I'm right. I mean, that's, that's gonna exactly definitely what Mike wants. Yes, right. Is, is my performance at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> more, yeah, more I need great. You got to MC the thing. Uh, that, yeah. that I could do. I've I've got a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then so I, I'm guessing there's gonna be more eating than dancing at your wedding mike true or false well i mean uh i don't dance much but I, I and i think my favorite activity is food so people who i invite probably most likely will share similar thoughts so i'd say we just boogie down uh at our tables uh with the mountain of whatever there is to eat i'm thinking that'd be a fun night so i love that that sounds really fun actually <laughs> 
Yeah, that does okay. All right. So for those of you who on the last question, if you're wondering what Mike did just recently at the K-pop conference from that list, Mike, which one was it? Uh, I, I I made a sky and pancake. You that changed giant pancake, yeah, and you that was good. Yeah, and you worked at McDonald's. Yeah, and oh, and I, oh yeah, and I worked at McDonald's. I was Ronald McDonald's partner. Uh, yes, you when were. We were passing out burgers. Now, Ronald McDonald. I always figured this guy, you know, from from seeing him on commercials, like this this will be the creepiest experience of my life. Because I'm, I'm not a big fan of clowns. Like, I've seen it a couple times. That's not that's not my favorite thing. Uh, the guy was pretty funny. Ronald, <laughs> funny guy. Gotta say, really. Wouldn't let him take care of my kids, but funny guy. Wait, kids? Yeah. How many kids we have? <laughs> How many are you gonna have, Mike? I <laughs> uh, gotta ask my future wife. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna regardless, be Ronald McDonald will not be babysitting. Will that's for sure. <laughs> Ronald oh, McDonald will not be asked to babysit now. No, so no. maybe. Maybe he'll get a whole bunch of happy meals. Who knows? All right. Well, I've got a trivia question for you, Mike, next. I, and this is for all you Mikey Chen fans out there. This one I think you're going to really enjoy. And that is in the there was a Try Guy videos that featured Mike where they all ate 400 dumplings in total. This was like one of those like dumpling eating competitions that, Mike, you got to talk to us about. How many did Mike eat in that video? A lot of dumplings. Regardless, that's a lot of dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> the guy has a bottomless stomach, though. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Dumplings are delicious. I could, I could definitely do the lower number. I don't know if I could do the higher number. In well, you know. So you know when. I remember one time I ate with uh, Mike in, in, in locally and we went to have ramen and I remember thinking, Oh yeah, you know, I see him eating a lot of food on his videos, but like, like how much he's going to eat in person. Like maybe he'll just eat a little bit and leave it. But Oh my goodness. Like basically he eats all the bowls to the point where you're seeing the emptiness of the bowl. And there's like barely any soup left. I mean, it's, it, it's definitely love there. All right. We're seeing a whole part. bunch of questions. Yeah. So okay. So one sixty four. Sadiq is saying one sixty four. Vicky is saying one hundred and one. Robin saying one hundred and one. Um, uh, flip flops needed. Uh, coming from Irvine is saying seventy nine. Wallace is saying uh, is seventy nine as well. So I don't know, Mike. Do you know the answer to this? I'm guessing I you do don't. know the answer to this. It is uh, one hundred and one dumplings. It is one hundred and one. One hundred and one dumplings. 101 dumplings. Uh, was I, it? I think that day we were we had a we had a time limit. I forgot how long the time mm. limit was. Uh, and then I think at the end it was me and Eugene neck to neck. And what well, I gotta say, like I had to keep talking during that whole thing. He was he just he could just eat. I'm gonna like disclaimer this. Uh, but uh, Eugene was definitely a tough competitor. And then finally he looked at me. He's like, man, you know what? We're just going to keep one upping each other. So let's just both stop at the same time. So we did. <laughs> and that was a wise decision from a wise man. How far do you think you could have gone had you pushed the limit? I mean, those weren't big dumplings. Like, I think you could have just, like, easily went up to the maybe 120, 130s. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you get a second wind. Um, depends if uh, the camel factor kicks in. You're able to push some of the food onto your into your hump on your back. Um <laughs> You know, am I the only one that has that? I don't know. So, uh, so then you hit that second wing, keep, just keep going. Is there, uh, is there another food that you think you could compete in really well or what you want to compete in? I love, uh, yeah, I, uh, that was, uh, that was, uh, I think the second food video we did, it was four pounds of, pho uh, finished in, in like, uh, 30 minutes. Damn. Um, and afterwards went out for ice cream. So that <laughs> I love, pho. I love it. Four well, that's why many of you have seen many of videos. He's often here in Orange County in Southern California because we got some pretty good fuck. Oh, for, for sure. sure. For yeah. sure. For sure, yeah, I love that. All right, Mike. Well, that's it for the trivia. But certainly, Greg and I want to introduce you to we have, we have some more to ask Mike. We have this is our time together, and so I think it would be really fun to just talk to you, Mike. I'd love to learn about sort of what's what what are you working on these days and most importantly how has your process changed during the pandemic and like 
an add-on to that, I would love for you to talk a little bit about how this pandemic has been for you as an Asian American, um, how your experience has been. Um, well, I feel like this, this pandemic obviously impacted everybody on this planet. Uh, myself included, and uh, of course, being a travel vlogger, travel is one thing you really can't do much anymore um, until, you know, recently, even then it's very limited capacity. So before my life was literally uh, never home. I was on the road about uh, 250 days minimum a year, uh, sometimes upwards of 275, 300 sometimes. Um, so it was just always on the road. And then, of course, when the pandemic happened, like I was in Seattle and I stayed in my apartment, I think, for the next six to eight months. Um, and uh, and of course, it's like, what do I I was thinking, what am I going to do? Like what, what if my job is done, basically, like, I can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, so kind of transitioned at that point to like filming some supermarket videos, uh, tasting different products videos um just trying to do stuff because i know everyone else is uh in a similar boat and everyone is scared and nervous and so am i and uh, a lot of uncertainties in the world so at least for me i feel you know i got a lot of messages people saying um that the videos really help so i wanted to keep making the videos and uh you know just i wanted to yeah, like somehow in some way if i could take people's mind off the pandemic for a little bit um but how it's different now it's still kind of similar like we still there's no you know there's no uh unlimited like we're not back to where we were before the pandemic in terms of travel um so we're just still just well at least for me i'm still just kind of roaming around the u.s um as safe as i can um and just trying to do whatever i can whatever i think is entertaining in the u.s uh, without a lot of traveling i don't want to travel too much either um but yeah i feel like still every everybody is still i mean it's it's better now but still everybody is uh uh, uh still dealing with a lot of uncertainties i'm sure including myself mm -hmm. and one of the one of my favorite videos and i know uh, flip flops needed said the same thing is the video where you actually bought your parents a house um and a home and i thought that was like it was so so needed and so and so inspiring during this really challenging time too. Um, your parents, obviously, I'm just curious, you know, like obviously we've been going through a lot, right? With the pandemic and we've been experiencing, we've been seeing more cases of stop Asian hate across the country. Um, how has this, has this played a role in what you do or have you experienced anything uh, positive or negative? Um, I haven't personally experienced anything. Obviously, just like uh, all the other Asians in, in around the U.S. or around the globe, um, that's you know, Asians living in uh, not Asia. Uh, we've been very aware of what's going on to the point where I used to post about this almost daily, and got to the point where I just didn't feel like I didn't feel like uh, it was doing any good anymore. It was just so much of it. You know, it seemed like it was happening. Uh, you know, every few hours, it seemed like some some act of hate against Asians was, was being per, uh, per perpetrated. And uh, yeah, like I felt very nervous for my parents. I felt very nervous for uh, our community in general. And I think this is something that um, is still not being addressed adequately because I feel like this didn't just stem from COVID. It, ha it started happening way before COVID that I feel like Asians, uh, Asian Americans, Asian Australians, I don't know, uh, I know Asians in Canada too, uh, have been dealing with uh, a lot of racism, ton of racism. It's just that we don't speak up. Asians are, are always taught ever since we were kids to be passive and not to cause trouble, not to get involved in things, just to walk away. And we've been pretty good at, at listening to our parents because that's another thing that we do well. Um, but that has caused a lot of you know, people to feel like we can be very much pushovers and easy targets, and that's not uh, the image that we want to 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 uh, portray to to other people anymore. I don't think we can. We have to stand up for each other, and that's another thing. I feel like Asians, uh, we've never been that united. Like I feel like we even within the Asian community is like, oh, I don't like this group. I don't like that group. We gotta stand up for each other. We gotta help each other. We gotta step up. And like when some when we see something happening, we can't just be like it's none of our business, it's all of our business. So um, this is a huge deal, and it's not slowing down. I think it's getting worse. I mean, 
we just had a case in New York where, um, you know, uh, someone grabbed a, a mother and son and uh, uh, on, on the subway, on the subway steps, and they fell, and, and, and the mom, unfortunately, just passed away. Like, stuff happens almost every day, like multiple times a day. It's just that we're hearing more about it now. I'm sure it happened a lot of times before, too, just that we're hearing more about it now, and it's sickening. And, um, and yeah, the, 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 the fact of the matter is nobody is doing any, really much of anything to, to, to help uh, make this better. Our politicians, like our leaders, even Asian leaders, I feel like nobody is do, do doing enough because this is such a crisis right now. So uh, it's up to our own community to kind of help each other and look out for each other. And I think that is where we start. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. And thank you so much for saying that. It's so true. You know, you're right. There's so many cases and you're right. We need to come together. And then, yeah, thank you, Mike, for sharing that. I, I really appreciate that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm glad that you're safe and most important that you haven't personally dealt with it, but doesn't mean it's that not happening when we're not seeing it. So, Greg, let me ask you this. I mean, th this is something that you and I have talked about before on the show, too. It can stop Asian hate, obviously. But, you know, hopefully, you know, we can get to we have these open conversations and i really yeah. thank you mike for being honest with us on this because sometimes you know we're always talking about um trends and we're talking about financial things that are happening but it's happening to real people but more importantly we're really grateful for the work that you're doing mike because i do know that i'm talking to a lot of people now and they're saying did you see mike's video on this and that and i you know the kids can't go out right now but watching lots of mikey chen right now it's like i feel like I'm living through his journey, which I think is, so thank you, Mike, for doing that. Greg, have you been watching these videos? I'm guessing you're watching. Yeah, no, I, mean, I love them. Just the idea of everything that you're doing, traveling and getting to see things, you know, from your perspective and where you're going and what you're doing and, and bringing people along with that. It's just really pretty incredible what you've, what you've been able to accomplish just with this, your YouTube channels, you know, just showing something that you probably enjoy doing no matter what and bringing everybody with it and letting everybody kind of get an exposure to that. I think it's just really, really fascinating what you've been able to do. Um, something I wanted to ask too, just along those lines, because you've been doing this, I think you said it was seven years ago that you that you really started you know, down right. this path. Um, over that amount of time, you've gone to so many different places, you've seen so many different things. And for you, what are some of the biggest innovations, I guess, that you've seen over these last several years or maybe more recent um, in culinary design or just innovations in general, as far as you making your uh, videos like what are the biggest changes you've noticed um it's pretty exciting to go to a lot of places where where food is something that that people are like actively working on via using using technology like if you go to yeah uh japan right now i just went to a 7-eleven where uh you you pay with your 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 hand you go there and like <laughs> basically high five the checkout machine uh and you're good uh, there's there's robots now. If you go to like uh, a lot of places in in Texas and uh, uh, I think New York has them too. Like there's robots serving you now. If you go to like hot pot places, out comes this creepy robot that has like all your all your meat and, and noodles uh, inside it. Um, you go to Japan. There's tons of food innovations where you know the Japanese are just so incredibly diligent when it comes to like making the next. Uh, like two hundred dollar melon. If you think you would not pay two hundred dollars for a melon, <laughs> wait till you take two hundred dollar melon. You will. Is it really worth two hundred bucks? Yet? Oh, you will just happily be like, wow, that was worth every penny. Really? Um, I mean, people, you know, will go to Vegas and, and spend a thousand dollars in a hotel room, but go to go to Japan and get five of these melons. <laughs> I think it's a much better, much better using your money. Uh, but yeah, like just incredible uh, dedication people have towards. I mean, this is an. I mean, food and this is why I love it because it's 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 not just food. You know, to a lot of people, it's their lives, it's their culture, it's their history, it's mm -hmm. uh, part of their identity. And this is what I always say when I tell people that they should travel and they should expand their palate. Uh, is that the best way to understand a different culture is taking a bite out of it for sure? Because I mean, throughout history. You know, people always ate. I mean, that's just yeah. always a constant. People always ate. And just exploring the food scene in, in a different culture, well, you'll learn so much about it. Um, and that's one thing I, I feel like when this whole mess of things is uh, is finally over and done with, hopefully soon, um, everyone can just, you know, learn. <laughs> you know, everyone's been sitting around and stuck inside for 
such a long time where I've been traveling in limited capacity for such a long time. Go out and, and see as much of the world as you can, you know, uh, because sometimes things like this happen and you right. can't anymore. Yeah, you can't predict something like this. So, yeah, take advantage of, of the opportunities that are there. I think it's really interesting you bringing up the the tech aspect, too, because, you know, the traditional food that somebody has, like you said, like you're you're taking a taste of the culture, but also combining that with the tech innovation to see where that can take it. And it's just kind of a really interesting, you know, kind of juxtaposition, I guess, as, as that increases. And you mentioned the robots, too. I think there's a restaurant in Paris. I believe it is. It just opened up where they have it's an entirely staffed by robots and they just make pizzas. And it's uh, I think it's like 80 pizzas an hour that they're cooking Whoa. out. I don't know if that's something that's going to be as good without that personal, you know, the the, the personal touch in there. But I suppose it's consistent. I guess Greg, that, that's out. that's how the takeover happens. It starts at a pizza right. joint in Paris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and it escalates to a noodle shop in Japan. And next thing you know, like they're running us down with cleavers and uh, yeah, uh, that, that's that's how they become the overlords. That's yeah, <laughs> that's how it is now. Like, you want some noodles? Implant this ship or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, Mike, you've Dang been to so spot. many places, so many different restaurants, and and let me ask you this: What's on your bucket list for places to visit and eat? I mean, you seem to have experienced so much, but is your bucket list still? I'm guessing there's still a lot of places you haven't been to. Is there one place in particular that's really on your radar? Uh, for sure. I mean, just sitting around, I have plenty of time to sit around and, and, and work on my bucket list. And there's still so many places I haven't been to. I wanna, uh, I wanna go to. Um, Greece is a place in Europe I've never been. I want to go to Portugal. Uh, Portuguese food is absolutely amazing. The little I've had in, uh, I've tried in the at the airport and um, um, in Macau, which is, has a lot of uh, Portuguese influence. Um, I want to go back to Asia. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's some Asian places I haven't been to uh, that I want to go to. Uh, I want to go back to. Uh, the Middle East, if I can, and I, you know, like go back to some of those countries that I missed. Africa was a huge. That I was supposed to. We we're we we're basically planning a trip for for Africa right before this whole thing happened. Um, so it was supposed to be. I was supposed. I was supposed to be going to Ethiopia, and then from there, a couple other countries in Africa, then heading over to Nepal. Like it was a huge trip of places I haven't been that I've been dying to go. So hopefully, after you know, hopefully. Yeah, uh, if this thing will ever go away, hopefully soon, then um, gotta hit these up. Like I think uh, the whole Turkey I've been to, Turkey I've been to, a wonderful country. I, I love Turkey. Um, uh, the videos I had to take down for some reasons. Uh, anyway, so but there's uh, this is I feel like this is something everybody should do. Like make a list. Uh, money I feel like is always best spent on experiences than stuff. Um, if you look at my, my, my house, like I don't have that much stuff in there. Like it's just, I haven't really bought anything. Um, but like anything, like I just, I just want to use my resources on, on experiences, whether that's traveling somewhere, hotels or, um, just anything. Just, I think some scientists said this, uh, there's research done where your brain remembers and gets much more joy out of experiences than like something that you'll, you know, something else you get on Amazon. So that's, I think something I would encourage everybody to do, like whether you can afford it or not, just at least make a list, uh, make a bucket list, make something. And then, you know, once you have enough money, do it. I love that. You're doing a plan. You're doing planning, right? You're making lists of things, places that you want to be and just like you do your financial plan. This is like from step A to step Z, what are you gonna accomplish? I love that. Thank you, Mike. What else yeah, we got, right? That's awesome. Well, I um, I have just a straight up food question for you. And I don't know if this is a difficult one to answer or not for you, but following along with your videos, certainly, you know, one of the things that you try a lot of is barbecue. And so mm -hmm. for you, mm. what is the best kind of barbecue? Uh, well, it depends, Greg, because if you talk <laughs> about barbecue, you're going to ruffle a lot of feathers. Exactly. I didn't want to box you in a corner there. <laughs> uh, I mean, you go to, like, I've had some of the best ribs in my life in, in St. Louis. Some of the best, uh, some of the best, uh, smoked meats in, 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 in a gas station in Kansas City. Uh, my favorite right now, at least for now, and, uh, maybe I'm a little biased because I just moved. I love Texas barbecue. I love it. Um, I could be getting at a Texas barbecue place every day, and I, I'm extremely happy. The brisket, the B12, 
beef rib is just unbelievable. If you never had Texas barbecue, there is just no beating it. Like I, I've said this in New York. I've said New York doesn't really have good barbecue. I stand by that. I don't really feel like New York has a lot of good barbecue places, uh, if any. Um, then that's because I've eaten at the best barbecue places. It's just nothing comes close. So uh, best ribs, some of the best ribs, St. Louis, Kansas City, brisket and beef rib, you got to go to Texas, like 100%. All right. All right, All right Greg. Now. Looks like we're taking the show on the road. Going to Texas. That's it. Yeah. yeah 100%. <laughs> My Texas husband is very happy to hear that. That is awesome. And, and Suzanne, by the way, joining us from LinkedIn, and she is from Austin, Texas, and she is saying she agrees. Like spending money on experiences like food, especially when you travel, I think yeah, that's such a great way to actually manage your you know, your bucket list too. I love that. Well, you know, this is something you. Know, you know, I've always wondered through the years, and I want to thank Greg for actually helping me with this question, Mike, is, you know, you and I have eaten at quite a few restaurants together, and I was I always love seeing you eat because there's so much enjoyment when you do this. And I always see when you, you're going through the dish, like certain things you love, certain things, you know. And by the way, if you've even ever eaten with Mike, you know that he's extremely generous. He always wants you to eat more, and and it's he's always giving you, like, the best. He's like, yo, I tried this so good. If you had a restaurant and – and, and you had a special dish, or let's just say if a restaurant came up with a Mike Chen dish and it was named after you, what would be in it and what would it be like? Um, 100% uh, it's going to be dumplings with a nest of noodles. That's my thing. Like, I love dumplings so much. I can never choose between dumplings and noodles. And I always having to choose, I always hate having to choose between that. Uh, I mean, if we can come up with like a, like I've seen this before, it was a, uh, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a cheesesteak wrapped with a slice of pizza. If we can come up with that, we can come up with noodles inside a dumpling. So, uh, nest of Bian Bian noodles, which are the best noodles, like the nice chewy belt length, uh, belt with noodles. That's really famous in my hometown of Xi'an, uh, with some delicious pork and dill dumpling that make your heart better pork that is amazing so pork dumpling with dill and noodles in oh, this for sure dill, and, i'm super underrated people use that so much as a garnish great ingredient really i grow dill in the back i'm gonna check this out let me ask you this mike so hot oil where does that come into play in this dish is it included in the dish is it in the dumpling or is it something you add yourself I mean, hot oil is something that should be with you at all times. Like, this is a, a, a necessary ingredient. Uh, I, I don't have it on me personally when I'm filming sometimes, but I always have it in my luggage. Uh, so sometimes I just forget to bring it. We are working on a travel size hot oil. So uh, as soon as that's available, that will be on my person at all times because that's something that's really, really important because uh, it could mean the difference between a good lunch and a great lunch. Okay. Okay. We're really excited about this. I don't know. I feel like this dumpling noodle dill extravaganza sounds pretty incredible. So if you're watching out there, this might be your chance to see what, you know, maybe put this Mike Chen dish on your menu and see, maybe Mike will show up and try this dish. Uh, Flip flops needed on YouTube is saying hundred percent agree. Hot oil every day, every day. That's right. Instead of, you know, instead of a first day kit in his car, I'm guessing he has a kit that opens up and it's just like different hot oils. Yeah, yeah. here's the first first AK. You put some hot oil on that wound, it'll just seal it right up. It's see, there know, it is. Kids don't do that, but like <laughs> <laughs> I'm Even sure better I'm to sure. have it on that desert yeah. island then. Yeah, it'll be beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> so Greg, do you do that? Do you put hot oil on everything too? I don't, but now I'm now I'm gonna start thinking about doing that because <laughs> especially if you've got a travel size one, I mean that shows how serious you are about this. I clearly need to be putting more hot oil on things. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Paint it on your wall. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got to get better about this. I'll, I'll definitely do that. By the way, I know we were joking about not watching the show being hungry. And I did that on, on accident. And yes, all talking about all these dumplings and everything else. I'm starving now. Um, but I did have another food question for you. Also, maybe not as controversial as barbecue, but just controversial to some people. When it comes to pizza, are you a pineapple person or not? Does pineapple belong on pizza? I, I don't, I, I, Greg, I, I, I don't understand the controversy. Like people are killing each other over this. This is like, oh, this yeah. is really not that difficult. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've, 
what is the hate of pineapple on pizza? I don't get it. Like, it's not something I request on all my pizza, but when I have some pineapple on my pizza, I don't hate it. I'm not going to discriminate fruit on my pizza. I mean, you got tomatoes on your pizza. That's a fruit. I mean, pineapple is just basically its sweeter cousin. So, uh, I mean, I think it's fine maybe because I grew up in the Midwest. I mean, I, I've had my fair share of Papa John's pineapple pizza. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't understand the extreme hate, though. Why don't people use that fuel for hate on broccoli? I mean, that thing takes up your stomach space, and it doesn't shrink. Like, I don't get why do you, why do you hate broccoli. You know it doesn't shrink. It just It's this cheap ingredient that just takes up so much of your stomach that you're, you're hungry. You're, like, you're full so much easier, and you can eat so much less. I mean, what about what cauliflower? That? What about cauliflower? Because that's sort of related to broccoli. Do you have a similar dis? No, because cauliflower for- when you when you stir fry it and chilies is actually really good, and it falls apart better than broccoli. Broccoli mm-hmm. is just I don't know. Like, and you guys, you guys ever had a feast of broccoli? Like, and, and been around people? I'm sure people complain about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, it comes out in, in very mysterious ways. It's just, it's not good. So, I mean. Let's put our hate on that. Broccoli on pizza. <laughs> Say no to that. Say no to that. Hey, speaking what of which, did you know? You? I, don't know. <laughs> I know. What did broccoli? I mean, what about beef and broccoli? It seems like it's a very common Chinese. Oh, here's the thing. thing. Here's the thing. People people see all this in, in Chinese restaurants. You know, broccoli is not a traditional Chinese ingredient. If you go to China, you're not going to find uh, these dishes. Maybe yeah, nowadays you will, but traditional Chinese dishes never include this. We have our own broccoli. We have uh, Chinese broccoli. Um, but not this. So this is any dish you see with this. With this, like this is my, this is my rule actually. When I look through a picture of a restaurant, if I see broccoli, a lot of dishes, I'm not going because I, I. To me, it's not authentic anymore. To me, the restaurant is not gonna give me what I want. So, yeah, the hatred is real for me. It really wow. is broccoli. Well, pineapple, yeah, I, I agree with you on the pineapple. I'm fine with pineapple on pizza. So, but <laughs> Twitter, that's a very divisive, very divisive thing. So yeah. I don't get Sorry it. for you pineapple haters out there. Well, did um, you know that? Did you know that pineapple pizza actually wasn't started in Hawaii? Did oh, you know really? that pizza? pineapple pizza started, started in Canada? In Canada. Canada. Huh. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, they they know what they're doing. They they made the whole poutine thing. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pro pizza. I'm pro we pizza no matter them. what. So. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Mike. Uh, I wanted to ask you this too. Just you know, we really, really appreciate you joining us here today too to talk about this and then take time out of your schedule because I'm sure you're doing a ton of stuff. And that's what I just kind of wanted to ask for everybody watching. You know, who are big fans of yours and uh, who are following along. I don't know if you can tell us like what you're working on or what's next on the horizon for you or any kind of teases for for what's coming up. Sure. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. Always great talking to to you guys. And and I, I haven't seen Winnie in so long, so it's really good to see 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 Winnie too. Um, and uh, uh, I've been working on a lot of stuff. We just uh, we're launching a few new shows. We're doing a traditional Chinese show. Uh, uh, we're gonna just put a lot of uh, myths and legends and great stories out there. Uh, that's gonna go up um, starting I think uh, middle of next month. Uh, we're working on a mukbang show where it's just gonna be storytelling and food. Um, and we're doing a cooking show as soon as uh, I can get to Canada. We're gonna start. We're gonna. Uh, start doing a cooking show we have everything set it's just it kind of just all closed down when uh, when COVID happened and also i got two restaurants coming up one is uh gonna be in new york um and one in houston texas uh so that's coming up i think september and october so I, you know wow. fingers crossed uh all this stuff will get to launch this year that's amazing wow. we're in texas mike houston and we're in new york uh, it's going to be in New York City. It's going to be in Queens, uh, Flushing. It's going to be a ramen shop. Uh, I tasted the uh, Wagyu ramen. Uh, mind blowing, mind blowing. So uh, I'm very excited about that. Well, we're very excited about that, and we're very excited to taste. It. But most importantly, hopefully, you actually might create this special dumpling at one of your restaurants. Which sounds like you know, sounds sounds really good. Oh, it's going to happen one day. Strictly Dumpling isn't just the name of my channel. We're going to we're going to build a restaurant chain out of that. It's just going to be dumplings instead of noodles. I, I so want those. <laughs> or however it works, whatever yeah, it works. Yeah, dumplings, yeah. noodles. That's mm-hmm. that's all that needs to say on the menu. For I'm sure. sure. So yeah. 
Well, um, that's amazing. And and Mike, you know, like we said, thank you so much. And Winnie, thank you for uh, bringing your friend Mike Chen onto the show. <laughs> Thank you for letting me do. I mean, it's, it's such a treat. I was so excited when he said yes. I mean, I, I I will tell you, I miss him so much. I miss just hanging out with him. Such a such a wonderful and sweet person. And everything that you see on video that you love about Mike, let me just tell you, he's a hundred times even more amazing in person. As and as a friend, I'm so grateful to have him in my life. So thank you, Greg, for letting me share him with everybody today. Um, and well, I don't know. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Winnie, uh, for saying all that. It's great seeing you too. And Greg, nice meeting him. Yeah, nice to meet my you too. MC for my wedding. That, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Consider me booked. I'm there. Um, uh, as long as I get a free plate. That's all I ask. Oh, for sure. That's that's it. That's the only payment. It's a buffet. Uh, <laughs> if you like multiple plates. <laughs> well, and uh, thanks to everybody tuning in too. We really appreciate all of you join the show every week, every Thursday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. And every week we're going to have something else. We're talking to cool people, talking about cool things. And you are just amazing for joining us. So please, you know, hit subscribe, share the show, uh, hit Winnie or I up anytime. You can always write us personally. Uh, any questions you have, any ideas you have, you know, just shoot them on over and we'll, we'll absolutely uh, talk to whoever it is. And we just uh, enjoy doing this with you, enjoy having you a part of this show and a part of what we do every week. So thanks. Thanks for being here. And I think uh, I think that's about it for this week. So um, thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Winnie. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank thanks you so much, guys. So much. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.